Hey guys, Ruby Rose here. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2013 and more importantly, welcome to my first ever YouTube channel. It's DJ Ruby Rose TV. I've even invested in a wind machine. Can you see that? I was so against them and then all the pop stars used them last year and I was like, you know what? Fine, I will. I will buy eight. Now, I just want to say thank you for everything. You guys have been with me since day one and I think that the best way to launch a YouTube channel is to give away some free stuff. So I looked around my house and in my heart and thought about things that mean a lot to me that would actually mean even more to somebody else. So I'm going to give away the first ever decks that I learned how to DJ on and I'm also going to give away the shorts that I wore for my first ever amateur boxing fight. Uh, when I was thinking about what kind of competition to do, I was, I was sick in bed, I was bedridden. I've been bitten by a white tail spider and I discovered a show called Would I Lie to You? I'm telling you that because I don't want to get sued for like stealing their idea. Uh, but I thought I'd be good at this and I want to see if you guys are good at this. So let's check it out. It's simple. I've invited a guest into my house to tell me some interesting stories about herself. The only thing is that some of these interesting stories may actually be completely and utterly made up. But that's right because that's when I will use my internal lie detector. Besides, I'm going to return the favour, tell her a few interesting stories about myself, which may actually be complete and utter bullshit. Alright, let's get this started. Um, but just before we get started, um, whoever you may be, can you close your eyes just for a sec? Thank you. Keep it close, please. Is this the part where I get presents? No, sorry, but friends that let other friends look shit on YouTube. When I was 16, I was entered into a modelling competition and uh, a couple of weeks after that, didn't, didn't hear anything and I went through a stage at school where I decided I was going to shave my head. So I shaved my head and then got a call the next day saying that I had gotten uh, into the finals and they asked if I had any bruises, cut any hair, dyed my hair, any different looks um, than what they were expecting and I lied and said that I would look exactly the same as when I had the long hair that they had picked me with. How long between the shoot and when you shaved your head? It was about three months. And did you go? Yes. Even though you lied? Yes. And what did they say? They said, well, when I say shaved, it wasn't like bald like yeah. Brittany. It was, it was just like a three. I'd kind of, yeah, cut it, basically shaved, but I had, I had some hair. Uh, they said, wow, you look really different. And they said, luckily you look okay with short hair. Okay, so you still look the job? Yeah. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with true on this one. Rush? Man! Yes, <laughs> it is true. And that competition that I speak of is the girlfriend modeling competition. And it was rather embarrassing because I had to call them from the airport because like, we kept walking past each other because they didn't recognize me. And I finally called and saw the person right there answer the phone. And I was like, I'm behind you. And they were like, oh my goodness, you do not look like this photo. Okay, so my first story, in 2003 I was in Germany and I was at a train station in Munich and I was trying to catch the train and pay for a ticket and I didn't have the right change and a lady tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around to get change and uh, she offered it to me and that lady was Megan Gale. Oh! What year was this? 2003. And what did you say to Megan Gale? I didn't actually know who she was at the time. Uh, it was a little bit, a little bit before, so uh, I think she was working in Italy at the time. So I didn't quite know. Who so she how, was. how did you work out it was Megan Gale if you didn't know who it was at the time? Because when Megan Gale made it big, and um, I saw her in the magazines a little while later, I put together that it was her that gave me the change. All right, I'm going to go with false because. I don't think that if someone gave me change, like on a tram, that if they became famous five years later, I don't think I'd remember that person that was looking at me on the train. Don't answer yet. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Rush? True or false? Bow, bow. What is the correct answer? Well, Megan Gale is incredibly beautiful and has a very memorable face, but it's false. Ha! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so... When I was younger and I used to go to the supermarket with my mum, I used to beg my mum to buy me what was 
actually condoms, uh, pretty much every day for about three months until she made a complaint at the supermarket and asked if they could be put in a bit more of a discreet uh, location. Uh, yeah. How old are you? Sorry? I was about eight. It was like, yeah, eight, eight or seven. Why did you want them? Well, because I used to collect trading cards, like football trading cards and yeah. tarsos and things. And at the time, the wrappers were really big and they had like a picture of a planet on them. Mm -hmm. And they had the same kind of wrapping as like trading cards. So I thought that they were special, they were like called satin or something. And I thought they were special like, you know, plant, a plant. I thought they were special planet trading cards and I wanted, I wanted them. And your mum never explained to you what they actually were or, or said anything? She just kept saying no for like a, a whole month? Yeah, she... She just, she would just say, no, we're not going to get them today, we'll get them next time. And so, of course, the next time I would ask again. See, I think that as a parent, I think you would just explain to your child what, what it was and that it was for, or just that it was for adults and that it wasn't for kids and it wasn't a toy. Um, I'm going to go with false. Rush? Yeah, strangely, that is true. Um, and I agree. True My mum... Yeah, my mum didn't tell me. She well, actually, no, she did. And I, she was like, "They're not trading cards. They're not for kids. They're for adults." And I had a hissy fit in the supermarket and was like, "Yes, they are." My friends at school, I, I lied. I was like, "My friends at school have these. These are the most like for everyone's favorite trading cards. They're the best. They're all planets." And lied and lied and lied and lied. And she's just like, "No, they're not." Because I used to have them right next to the, like where you check in and... I love the part how all the friends at school would have them. Yeah. Because if your mum didn't know if you were lying, you'd be... But look, they're in everyone's pencil case. Yeah. It's a safety thing. So yeah, and she did have to say to the supermarket, can you take them away from being like right there next to the chewing gum? Because um, they look like trading cards to my daughter. Well, chewing gums and condoms generally go together. <laughs> you need both. That's disgusting. So this is probably one of my more embarrassing stories. Um, I met a very nice guy and uh, we were going out for a little while and uh, we went back to his place and we were joking around a little bit and when I was a child I used to have a lazy eye mm -hmm. and whilst we were having sex I thought it would be really funny if I did the lazy eye and he got so upset that he ended up kicking me off. What do you mean you decided to do the lazy eye? I can do it on command. I can control it. Well, okay, I want to see you do the lazy eye. They want to see it. No. I'm gonna go with. Sorry, YouTube. I'm gonna go with like what the? I'm gonna go with that's false because why would you? Why would you do that to anybody? <laughs> Rush, what do you think? <laughs> oh no! Don't. This is gonna get so weird and awkward <laughs> if this is true. Awkwardly, that is 100 percent true. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. And I've let you into my house. That really happened. <sighs> Okay, I can't even believe I'm saying this on YouTube, but one of the most embarrassing things that has ever happened to me, no wonder I got bullied in school, was um, we had like a, a sport, you know when you do the beep test and you do like a circuit lot of training in the gym with pretty much everyone in your year level. I went to the bathroom at one point and came out and I had toilet paper stuck to my shoe, which is fine and that happens to everyone, but part of the toilet paper wasn't clean. It wasn't my toilet paper. Mine went into the toilet, but I had stood on somebody else's toilet paper that had stuff on it, and I, I walked out and it was trailing behind me, and everybody saw. It wasn't yours? I swear it wasn't mine. How would I get my own? No, that doesn't even make sense. Okay, next question. Um, who noticed it first? How long did, or how far did you get before you got noticed? For me, it just feels like everything was in slow motion, but it, somebody kind of, everyone sort of looked, and I was, you know when everything feels like everyone's looking at you, and you're like, oh, that's a really good pair. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Hey, good. Hey, thanks for good. noticing. Uh, and then, yeah, I guess like people just were going, like all looking, and I looked down, and I was like, oh my God, and I wasn't that stressed, because I just thought, well, whatever happened. And then I looked at it, and I was like, oh my God, this has got stuff on it. And How, how long was it, can you like? No, oh, it was like, not really that long, but, you could still kind of tell. Was it kind of sharp or was it flat? No, it was. It was sort of. Like it was on its last days. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just a plain bit with a piece of poo. It was like kind of all weird and a bit brown. So it was number twos. Mm. And it wasn't yours. And what did you do? 
I took it off and then I I went to go With back. With your hand or did you like step on no, it? No, I just, yeah, like, did, did my sister. Step and then um, I went to the teacher and I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. And she was like, it's, it's okay, don't worry, no one's teasing you and everyone was. And so then she let me go. For wishful thinking, because I like you, I'm going to say false because I hope it is. Rush. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> no, it is in fact false. But it did happen to someone because I Googled it. So I'm very sorry for the person it happened to. That is awful. I know. I did they specify it was number two as yeah. well? Yeah. Oh, I'm whoever you are. We're really sorry about That's that. That's really bad. Yeah. In about... I must have been about 18, 19. And I met Magda Sabansky from Kaz and Kim. And we got chatting and I offered her my personal, she was looking for a new personal trainer and because the one that she had was away and I offered her my personal training skills uh, even though I wasn't actually a qualified personal trainer but I was a very big fan of hers and so I kind of, um, I was going to start a personal training course, I was sort of halfway through doing one um, and I said to her I'm halfway through sort of doing one and, and I want to do this and would you like me to be your PT and she said, I, that'd be fantastic, I'm looking for one, and we exchanged numbers, and um, then I chickened out in the end because I thought, you know what, you're actually not a qualified personal trainer, and she's a celebrity, and you might go to jail. Okay. How much were you wanting to charge her? Did you guys talk about money? We didn't get to that yet. Okay, how did you meet Magnus Fancy? Like, what was the scenario? We were at a club in uh, St Kilda, and I, I, I think I was just sort of introduced to her by someone. Or I knew we had mutual friends or something. Okay. Um, let's see. How long between when you gave her your number did she take to call you? Well, she, no, she didn't call me actually. She messaged me uh, to get my email address yep. and then she emailed me what her requirements were. Yep. And when she started, when she emailed that and then the list of the other things that her previous PT had been doing, that's when I kind of got a bit... Um, I realised I couldn't get away with that for much longer. Plus I was drunk at the time when I initially thought this was a great idea. So when I was sober reading, you know, I used to do 15 lunges and squats and then we'd like to take a walk along this place and then we often visit blah blah and I like my heart rate to be at. I was like, oh god, you have really, really stuffed up. What did Magda Zabansky say when she realised that you were a bit of a fraud? I never told her that I was a fraud. Uh, I just, I think, alluded to her having to many clients. <laughs> <laughs> did, uh, did Magda uh, remember this when she met you years later? Yes, she did. And did she bring it up? Yes, she did. And she obviously knew you weren't a personal trainer? Yes, she did. I'm going to go with that this is true. Rush? It's true. <laughs> it is true. And Magda wrote me this message going, Hey. I hope you're listening, Magda. Yeah, she's going to totally say this now, but she actually messaged me. Um, we've been hanging out a bit, though, and then she messaged me and said, Hey, you by any chance meet me, like, you know, 10 years ago? And How is your industrious PT career going? <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, yes, you did meet me. Why Why do I have a name like Ruby Rose? Because that, that was what was familiar to her. She's like, I'm sure I, it happened. And uh, that's probably one of the worst things I could have ever done. But we're friends now. Anyway, if you're looking for a personal trainer, I am the man to call. 1-800 personal trainer. 1-800 not actually personal trainer, but <laughs> I like to pretend that she is. Yeah, that's a good one, huh? Alright, serious one, serious story. Uh, when I was young, I wanted to have a sex change from female to male. And I even like sort of re researched it and I started a fund in a cup um, to go towards what I thought later would be like maybe surgery or hormones or whatever I may need to change my sex. How, how, sorry, how old were you? Gee, I would have been in, I was in primary school. Primary school? Yeah. Okay, um, and what did your mum say about it? I don't think I actually really told my mum much about it. Where did you take the cup to get donations from? I think it, yeah, knocking on people's, hi, I want a sex change, can I have 50 cents? Oh, so you just like put it No, together. I would just find money, like, you know, whenever I'd, mum would leave money on the couch or like if I got money sent from like an auntie for Christmas, I would just put the money in the little cup. 
How long did you do this for before you realised that 20 cents is <laughs> not really going to do it for you? Um, I, I did it for a really long time actually, I would have probably done it for a year. And your mum never found out that there was just this random cup of... No, I think she knew I was saving up for something but I didn't tell her what. She never asked you? No. Okay, why did you stop? I think I... I think that I only stopped because, um, not because I stopped thinking I wanted a sex change, but because I then had all this money and I was like, I went on Nintendo 64 <laughs> and did that instead. I bought something. But I did a fairly just... large cup. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, it wasn't that. But I did, I did go and buy like a computer game or something instead. Okay. And you, okay, I'm, because you're five and I don't think, I don't think you would have been into computer games at that age. Because I don't know, I, I know I wasn't, and we're the same age. Uh, I'm gonna go with Fogs. Rush. It was in fact true. I did. I actually thought I wanted to be a boy, and every time I got in the shower, I'd always slick back my hair, and then I would. This is the worst part, which I'm glad I didn't include because you already didn't believe me. Is I would get a, a curl. I would get a bit of hair with gel, with three dollar gel from the chemist, oh, and I'd put a curl here, like like Superman. Somebody watched Grease too much. No, I, I wanted to be Superman, so I would slick back all my hair with shampoo, and then get a bit of gel and twist this little thing. And because I had like not hit puberty, I had like a little chest. Wanted to look like a and, Superman, ended up looking like Kimiki. And yeah, and uh, I started saving for, for what I thought would be like me, you know, transforming into a boy. Yeah, for all of those of you who would like to do the same, start your cup and write us for donations. Correct. And you'll need more than a cup. It's a really expensive. Well, that was actually really fun and embarrassing and fun. Uh, I can see this becoming like a reoccurring thing. I just have to find more guests to bring into my house. Now, Alicia, who is this girl? Well, you're about to find out. The only problem is she's going to tell you four times and you're going to have to guess which one is true. Good luck! Hi, my name is Alicia. I met Ruby about a year ago uh, because the lovely person filming this at the moment is my boyfriend and his name is Rush and I met Ruby through him. Hi, my name is Alicia. I know Ruby because I am a Melbourne-based makeup artist and I've worked with her on several shoots including Cleo and just last week for the paper. Hi, my name's Alicia and I know Ruby because she's my best friend. When I started uh, a new high school in year 10, I got told that the one girl that you don't talk to is Ruby Langenheim because it is complete social suicide. Turns out that the only seat left in my year 10 English class was next to her and uh, I sat down and the rest is history. Hi, my name's Alicia and I met Ruby because I am an executive dog walker and I have the best job in the world. I take care of beautiful Daisy when Ruby is out of town. <laughs>